Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we've got a Photoshop tutorial and this is on mixer brush uh, portrait painting. So we're going to take a normal portrait photo here and we're going to turn it into something fabulous. It kind of looks like an airbrush painting uh, using tools in Photoshop. And that's what we're doing for this lesson. So uh, we're going to turn it into an artistic portrait like we've seen this one here turns into that one there. We've also got uh, this photo for you um, of a male model and you can have a go at turning that into a painting as well. We've kind of made this more oil painting than air pa airbrush painting, but you just kind of use a, a wet and moist uh, uh, mixer brush when you're doing that. Uh, so we use mixer brush, filter gallery, a uh, bit of camera raw at the start, uh, plus a smudge tool that can be useful for some things also and we put in a different background and that's pretty much it now remember i'm a bit of a slow talker so make sure you go to the youtube's uh players tools cog at the bottom of the player bar here click on that and set playback speed to 1.5 1.75 or maybe even double speed too uh, because I'm a slow talker and it'll fly a lot better if you watch it at a faster speed. All right, this is going to be a very long lesson. It's quite involved to make an airbrush portrait from a photo. And so there'll be a timeline index in the video description so you can take breaks. If you get up to a certain section, save your work, you want to take a rest, uh, just do that. And then when you come back, you can find that section and click on the number here and YouTube will take you to that point in the video. All right, so these are some made by our students. Now you don't have to do um, portraits of models and things. You can do other things. So this was a sports one. Uh, there's the original uh, photo, which had a bit of blur in it. And here it is after it's had some uh, mixer brush done on it, just to make it a bit more painting-like rather than a photo. Uh, portraits come up really well. If you've got a photo of a team player on a team, uh, this is one that our students did of a basketball one. Yeah, you can turn that into a portrait. Um, maybe there could have been a bit more work on the teeth and the tattoos, but that's a pretty good job uh, for someone's first time making an airbrush portrait. Uh, cars work really well uh, also, like this photo here of a fabulous red pony. Gotta love the Mustang. Uh, take that and do a bit of mixer brush work on it to turn it into this portrait here, uh, which looks really nice. I really like how that one turned out. You can do a, a beach photo, just kind of make that into a painting. So you can do landscapes as well. Uh, people, of course, into portraits. This one here, just of a motorcycle jump, just a bit of uh, mixer brush in the background, a little bit on the motorcycle there uh, to make that a bit more painting-like. Uh, this is a really good job that's been done on making a portrait from a photo. Uh, here we have an avatar one, uh, one from a game. And this one was done really well uh, into an airbrush type portrait uh, as well from the original photo. Or you can just do a landscape. This sunset picture of a tree has come up quite well as a mixer brush painting. All right, so it doesn't have to be a photo of a person necessarily. You can do mixer brush and make paintings of anything just like real paintings are. So creating a mixer brush portrait, which is what we're going to do in this lesson, there's eight steps. So it is going to be a long video. All right, so we open and process it with Camera Raw. Uh, then we get going with our mixer brush in Photoshop, but we need to do uh, the face separately to the eyes, separately um, to the lips and all of this, so it takes a while. Uh, we can use a filter then to change the hair and the eyebrows. We don't do those with a mixer brush straight away. Uh, we use one of the preset filters in Photoshop. Then we have to mask over that filter to remove the effect from the eyes. Uh, then we can start work with the mixer brush on the hair, uh, do some vibrance and saturation adjustment layers along the way and make some final adjustments. And also you can add in um, a new background. You don't have to, maybe your photo doesn't need a new background, but uh, we certainly added it in for our portrait. So they're the nine steps. It says it involves eight steps up here. Okay, it turned out to be nine steps. Uh, and that's why the video is going to take a while so we can get started. All right, so we've got three different images you can practice on. So we've got the blonde model portrait. That's the one we're going to work through in this video. All right, then we do have the one of the guy if you want to do a male portrait. And we've also got another one here of a brunette model. So you can do the brunette model if you want. 
there are uh, full step-by-step -step instructions for the brunette model as well so you can download that and follow a slightly different set of instructions to the blonde model mostly the same about 90 percent the same and do the brunette one uh, but we don't have a separate instruct set of instructions from the guy from what you learn from doing either one of these ones you should be able to do the guy okay so the first thing is we get our portrait photo and we just open it up in Photoshop then we go filter and go into the camera raw filter all right and what we're going to do is we're going to make some basic adjustments to this original photo we're not going to change exposure or contrast highlights we're going to take right to the left shadows are going to go all the way to the right uh, whites are coming down a bit and blacks are coming up a bit and that'll just change it uh, just the first part of making it look more like a painting than a photo okay so they're the camera raw adjustments and they're the usual kind of adjustments we make uh, it's pretty much the same with every portrait photo we're doing and now we can start doing the mixer brush on the paint now because we're going to be doing painting in this lesson you can go up here and change from being in essentials in the top right hand corner of photoshop to be in painting uh, but i don't know that it matters 100 percent i think you can still stay in essentials and the mixer brush is still accessible but because we're doing a painting we just change it into painting mode which gives you a slightly set of different tools available uh, in the tools down the side now we don't want to work on our original photo. I want to leave that as it is. This is the one we open that's called background and it's locked at the moment. We need to make a new layer where we're just going to work on the face and the skin basically. So down the bottom there's a little plus sign next to the trash can and you click that plus sign that makes a new layer. Then you can double click in here and change its name to say face and then click on that so that's the active layer all right so we just made another layer and called it face if you've been doing our course this will all be familiar making layers it won't be anything new so we suggest you've done some of the lessons in our playlist on youtube and our course before doing this one uh, in the color palette down here in the tools we need to set the top to white and the bottom to a skin color the background to skin color and remember there is this arrow here where you can flick between the two colors we're mainly going to be mixer brushing with the white um, one showing but you can use the other one if you need to darken things with the mixer brush all right now we click on the mixer brush tool so the mixer brush tool uh, if you're in painting mode I think it comes up as its own tool if you're in essentials you'll have to hold down on the normal paintbrush and get this paintbrush that's got the teardrop with it that we can put varying amounts of paint onto the brush to paint and this needs to be set up very carefully uh, for the best results so you get onto that mixer brush tool and then you need to use the down arrow and the size now the down arrow the type of brush you want is just a soft round brush for this and the size you'll need for the uh, blonde model photo portrait is about 40 pixels so just slide this across or type 40 in there for the pixels amount and then there's a, a, a whole lot of other settings across the top as well it's very important that this setting here you click on that one okay so that it's not darkened and it'll be like this because we don't be loading the brush up because we'll get way too much paint and it won't work very well so you want that one turned off so it looks like this and then this one you need to click so it's kind of dark highlighted because we want to clean the brush after each stroke we do uh, now for the type use this drop down arrow here and choose a moist one and wet should be set at 10%, load at 5%, mix at 50%, and flow at 20%. These settings are very important, although you can play around with them and see the effects. And then if it's all messed up, just hold down Control and press Z to go backwards. But we recommend you stay on 10, 5, 50, and 20. And then there's some other important settings. Just set smoothing to 40%, this one here. And the most important one is depending on your laptop I think on if your screen's wide enough it says sample all layers and you can tick it but if you're working on a compressed uh, laptop on a smaller screen I think instead you get this layer stack image and it's important that that's clicked so that that's dark so that that's turned on because we want to uh, be able to reach through that face layer we made down into the original picture below to get colors from it that we're painting on the face layer so that's got to be ticked sample or layers or this stack of layers needs to be turned on that's super super important if uh 
you'll find nothing's working unless you have that set. So set those up very carefully for your mixer brush. Okay, now we're ready to um, start painting on the face and we'll show you this in the live demonstration. We won't be able to do the whole portrait because it takes ages to make one of these. Well, it takes a full sort of half an hour for an experienced person, 20 minutes. So we're not going to do it all. But in the live demo, we'll show you how to get started with the mixer brush. And it's important the direction you paint in. So here's the original photo and you sort of start with your mixer brush painting up and down on the nose. And then at the sides, you kind of paint like this, I'll move the mouse a bit slower. When we get to the bottom of the nose, you kind of go round like this in a U shape. So, and over this side, you kind of paint down like that. And when you're doing round the eyes, don't do the eyelashes, but just kind of paint in a kind of a U shape or an arc like that. And here you can just round and round and round smush. And here you need to kind of paint like that. So you're kind of following the lines of the face, if that makes sense. When you get down the side, you kind of paint down the side of the face and in. All right, so it's very important the directions you've got. Now, at any time, you can click this eye icon on the face layer, and that'll take you back to the original photo and show you what it used to look like, and then you can turn it back on and see what yours is. But the idea is that this skin, which has texture and kind of little dots on it, we're gonna smooth all that out by using the mixer brush. So when you finish that, it should all look smooth. Don't do the eyes, don't do the lips, so do not do eyes, do not do lips, do not do eyelashes, and do not do eyebrows or hair. We're just doing skin on this layer, which is called face. Now, if you do happen to make a mistake, like say we were painting and we smudged the skin into the eye, you can just get onto your eraser tool. You can use the square brackets to make it either bigger or smaller. And then you can just erase out um, across the eye there to remove the paint. And then you can go back to your mixer brush and continue. Or you can do control Z is another way of fixing it up. All right, now the lips and the eyes. We make separate new layers for lips and eyes. But remember, we're not doing eyelashes or eyebrows, we're just doing eyes. Now on the eyes, get a very small brush like size 10 and kind of paint in circles like along this dark outline, along this gray bit here, kind of around in that brown bit in a circle and a little circle going round and round on the black. Okay, because we want to keep those shape of the eyes. We don't want to go smudging this gray into the pupil or the eyeball where the, the black dot, all right, and mess all that up. So that's slow and careful painting. If you make a mistake, remember you can hold down CTR on your Z to go backwards and then try again, which you'll probably be doing. Now, the idea is you also make one for the lips and with the lips, they kind of have up and down lines here on lips usually. Uh, and all you do is you're just kind of painting across those and in little round circles with a small brush just to smooth all the lips out so they look like this. So I've got a separate layer for eyes where we're kind of painting in circles along each color and not mixing the colors together. And then we've got one for lips where we're kind of smoothing up out all these up and down lines, all right? And they're on separate layers. That way, if you've messed up the lips, you can always just delete the lips layer and have another go, all right? So we're not harming our original painting and we can go back steps easily. All right, now once we've got that done, we're ready to add a highlights gloss layer. And this is something uh, new we haven't done in any of our lessons before. Uh, so you make a new layer. So remember there's a little plus sign down here. You click, double click in here and call it highlight. So that's a new blank layer we've got. All right, and we're gonna go to select and use color range, which is something we haven't done before. Now you go select and color range and this panel will come up and we're gonna slide this fuzziness slider, right? Now, the idea is to move that fuzziness slider probably around into the 50s and 60s, just so you're starting to see the face and the hair. You don't wanna slide it all the way up the end here and be able to see the whole person. That's not gonna work properly for this highlights and gloss layer. We just need to start seeing their face a bit in a shadow and their hair, okay? So it's like that, and then you click the OK button. Now, what will happen is the bright areas uh, will be selected. Now, I think we forgot a step. Let's go back. Oh, yeah. The, another important thing is 
<coughs> with this eyedropper tool here, you move out and pick the whitest, brightest bit on the face, which will probably be along the nose here or on the end of the nose. So you need to click there to sample what is the brightest part. All right, make sure you do that step as well. Do your fuzziness to sort of around uh, 55 to 65 to 68. Okay, and then when you click OK, this is what will happen. It's kind of highlighted or it's chosen all of the brightest parts on the picture here. All right, and that's what you should see. And next we get on the paint bucket tool. So that might be hiding behind the gradient tool. You might be seeing this tool. Uh, if that tool's in the way, then push down on this and get on the paint bucket tool. And you need to make sure this is on a white color for the foreground color. And you're just going to dip your paint bucket into that nose and just click two or three times, all right? And you should see these light areas filling with white. That's going to be way too bright, but don't worry about that. We're going to fix that up in a minute. So we've got all that done with our paint bucket. Just click two or three times in the nose there. This is all turned white. Do control D and you can see, whoa, we just spilt white paint kind of in the bright areas is all we've done. But we're going to kind of fix that up, adjust these highlights down. So uh, you go filter, blur and Gaussian blur. So remember we're on our highlights layer. So it's only going to blur what we've done in highlights. So it's not going to blur the eyes and the lips and other things. So this is fine. So go filter up the top on that tab, blur and Gaussian blur, and then set the radius to around 20 in size. And also uh, reduce the layer opacity. So do that and click OK. All right. Then you go here and take that highlights layer and this one, this down arrow here, just slide it so it's only about halfway, about 50 to 60 percent. And what you'll see then is instead of being way too bright, we've now kind of blurred the white bits and kind of toned them down a bit. But it's kind of nice. It's like a nice bright um, light is shining on their face. So often when you see painted portraits, the kind of bright light shining on the person is kind of exaggerated more than it would be in a photo. And that's the sort of look we want. All right, now, so now we're going to do work on the hair and eyebrows. We've finished doing the face, eyes and lips. So we make a new layer. <coughs> so click on that plus sign, new layer, hair and brows, excuse me. <coughs> All right, and we're going to get that new layer called hair and brows. And then we want to copy all the work we've done so far. See where we painted on the face and the lips and the eyes and the highlights. We want to paint, copy that all into this layer. So this is kind of a bit of a yoga trick with your fingers, but you have to hold down CTRL key, ALT key, Shift key, hold all of those down with one hand, with your left hand, three fingers, and then click on E for everything. And it's going to copy everything into this layer. All the work we've done will now get copied into that layer. So I'll be doing this again during the lesson. So Control Alt Shift, you've got to get your left hand, three fingers on that. Then you press the E key and the whole lot of work, everything, all the layers should copy into this layer. All right, now once we've got that done, we go filter and go into the filter gallery. Now from the filter gallery, we're going to choose the artistic um, subset or sub gallery. That's the gallery we're going to use, artistic. And we're going to go for dry brush and set these sizes. So you can see this on the following page. So we make sure we open the artistic folder. Now you can try out all these other ones, but they don't work too good. The only one that works for what we need to do in this case is dry brush. So make sure you click on dry brush and set the brush size to two, the detail to nine and the texture to one on these sliders or type in the boxes and then click OK. Now the hair will look a bit rough. But what we've done is we've stopped making it a photo and made it more into rough crayon pencil. And we're going to use the mixer brush to smooth all of that out, all right? The hair, I find, when I do these, is one of the trickiest parts to do. Like the face, lips, eyes, and that, once you've done it a couple of times, is easy. But once we start getting into hair, uh, things seem to get a bit harder. All right, now we have also applied that dry brush to the eyes and eyelashes, which has kind of messed them up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, 
not use the eraser tool to erase around the eyes. We're going to set a mask up and we've done this in previous lessons too when we did selective color and made the black and white mask, the black and white photo, the color photo, they made a black and white mask on top and then painted through it. So if you've done our lesson on selective color, which you should have done because you should do these lessons in order, this will make sense. Otherwise, just pay attention closely. So we're on that layer where click sites highlighted. You go to this Japanese flag symbol down here next to FX and click on that and you'll see See this white thing that's linked? Uh, that is the mask over the top hiding all of that at the moment, all right? So uh, we've got all of that. Now painting black on the mask is what we need to do. So get on your normal paintbrush. So you might have to push down here and change from mixer brush into normal paintbrush, okay? So we don't want the teardrop, we just want the normal one. And we want a size of about 70 and make sure it's soft round and make sure this color is black here. All right, and the background color is white. They're the two colors we need and then we're ready to go. So use the magnifying glass tool to zoom right in on these eyes. And what we want to do is uh, we're just going to uh, paint with the black paintbrush over them just so that we take the artistic filter that did all this hair off them and they become kind of like they were previously where we can see the eyelashes and we can see the eyes clearly all right so we're just painting over those eyelash parts and all of the eye eyelash parts and all of the eye just punching a hole in that uh, artistic filter so these are not part of what's being filtered these paintbrush marks here from the filter uh, i kind of like them so i just leave them in but you could also uh, paintbrush black mask over there and make holes if you want to but that's kind of good. That's really looking painting-ish. So we'll leave that as it is. All right, now to just do your view tab up the top and fit on screen to get back to normal size after we've done the zooming in. And now we're ready to use the mixer brush to fix out up that kind of frizzy crayon type hair. And this time we're using pretty much the same settings as we have, we're just changing the brush type. Now to get to the different brushes, to get to this like sponge brush, what you have to do is you have to uh, make the new layer of course called hair and we're gonna get this sponge tip. Now to get the sponge tip, you have to go up the top of Photoshop to the window tab and click on brush settings and that'll open up this panel here. And what you can do in the brush settings is there's a slider here and you can go around and look and use either the 60 sponge or the 112 sponge. Pick one of these two to use and we're gonna do lots of mixer brush with this sponge type brush uh, across the hair. So all we do is we're doing lots of mixer brush following the lines of the hair. So here you follow kind of out like that. Here you follow down here along the hair. But we're just doing lots of sponge painting in these directions. Uh, and you can see already that's smoothed out and it kind of looks more like airbrushed hair. It doesn't look like a crayon anymore. It doesn't look like a photo. Now the part in the middle, that's going to be tricky. So don't paint over that too much yet. We're just trying to get this outer bit of the hair, everything apart from the part here, all fixed up. Now, for the part, we use the smudge tool. Now, we've got three problem areas to fix here. We've got this little bit here. Uh, we've kind of got a gap in the hair there where we can see up some of the gray background. So we need to kind of smudge over that. And here we've kind of got the white hair coming out of the part, but then we've got a black splotch, a dark splotch there. It'd be nice if we could kind of push some more white hair into where the, it looks like there's a little pothole there. All right, so we're going to use the smudge tool to push up and try and push some white hair into there. So make a new layer called smudge hair. And then we need to do that trick again, that hold down CTRL, ALT, Shift and E all at the same time. And that'll copy everything that we've done, all the work we've done so far into the smudge hair layer. All right, now the smudge tool hides underneath the blur tool. So if you've clicked this arrow to have your tool side by side, like we've been telling you to in all of our lessons, uh, when you go down the tools here, you might see this one, the teardrop tool, the blur tool. You need to push down and hold down on this little arrowhead in the corner and get on this guy. This guy here is the smudge tool. That's the one you need, okay? And for the smudge tool, uh, we want size 75, just normal, strength 50%, okay? That's what we're using on our smudge tool. And... I think that's all we're telling you about the smudge tool. Uh, let's go back up. Now, the idea with the smudge tool, like we said, 
is to, once you've set all this up, is to just try and push here to get some white into there, push that so that white bit goes away and kind of push and smudge some of this white hair into that gap. All right, you might have to use sort of control Z. It might take a few control Zs and retries to do it. And certainly zoom in while you're working on these areas as well and then do view fit to screen to zoom out. So that smudge tool on the hair to fill up these little, the pothole up the top, this gap here and smudge over that white bit there. All right, so let's move along. Now mix a brush on the clothing. <coughs> Again, just a new layer called clothes. Mix a brush, go back to the soft round brush. Now, <coughs> kind of follow the lines of the clothing. So here we're kind of going up and down like that. Here we're going along that line. Uh, we've left a bit of that in there, but we've just kind of, and on these uh, lines going down the, the top here, just kind of paint along those. Now be careful not to paint over this necklace and smudge that up too much with a mixer brush just a little bit so it's not quite so detailed. Anyway, we do all the mixer brushing around the clothes and get those done on a new layer called clothes. And then we're gonna make a new layer called adjustments. So another new layer, uh, do the old press, hold down control alt shift and press E to copy everything into that new adjustments layer. And we just did a bit of image adjustments, hue saturation, image adjustments, brightness, contrast, image adjustments, vibrance. Uh, like you learned how to do in our very first uh, lesson on zoo animals. And also I used the spot healing tool to remove some of these. Uh, there were some loose parts of the hair. Uh, we've left some of them there, but you can remove some of them out. Uh, maybe you'd like to even remove or try and remove all of those out. All right. So that's what we we're doing uh, with those. So here's all our layers we've made. Uh, that's what we've done so far. Now we're going to uh, need to save this. So do file save as and save it as a PSD file called finished. All right. Because that will leave you with a Photoshop with all the layers that you can come back to and make changes, right? If you decide something's really messed up and you want to backtrack and fix it up. Because after we do this next thing and we merge all the layers together, squash them all together and combine them, it's a bit like taking all the ingredients, the eggs, flour, sugar or something for a cake and just suddenly putting it in the bowl and mixing it, we can't turn it back again into the separate parts. And that's what this would be like. Once we merge these layers, uh, unless you're still in there and doing control Z, but once we've merged these and saved, you can't go back and get them again. So save a version now that's a PSD file called finish so you can get back to this. All right, now we need to hold down the control key. So keep your finger left hand holding down CTRL in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard and go click, 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 click on all these layers so they're all selected at the moment. All right, then we go to the layer tab up the top and do merge layers. Or you can uh, right click on here, I think, and do the same thing. But we're going to layer up the top and right down the bottom here, it's got a thing called merge layers, all right? And what'll happen is that will make your whole portrait you've done all squashed down into this bottom layer called background and all your changes will now be compressed into one single layer. Now save this new one we've just made, call that flattened layers. So save this as blonde model flattened layers or portrait flattened layers, all right? So we know which one this is. All right, now, we're going to remove a bit of shadow from the eye. So this might be a good time to take a break because we've been going for nearly 30 minutes. So we've done all of the main things. We've squashed all of our changes down into one single flat layer. And we're going to make some final adjustments to that. And then we're just going to slot the blue background in and then we're pretty much finished. Uh, so maybe take a break now and then in the timeline you can come back, find this section that says remove shadow from eyes uh, in the timeline index, click on the number next to that and you can come back to this exact point in the video. Okay, so welcome back. And what we're gonna do now with that single um, compressed merged layers image that we've got is we're gonna go onto this one, which is kind of looks like a lollipop. Uh, this is called the dodge tool. It's used to brighten things up. Uh, so it lives near the paint bucket. If you're not seeing it, remember, just push down on this arrow in the corner and make sure you get it onto the lollipop tool. And the settings we need to use, are we're going to make it big, around 150 in size of a soft uh, round sort of thing happening there. Range is mid-tones. 
exposure is 50 percent and protect tones is clicked by the looks of it so I use those exact same settings there because they're the ones we use now you only need to do a little bit of this if you click a few times it'll come out like someone shining two little torches on her eyes or something and they'll be too bright and fake we just kind of it's a little bit dark there so we just want to put this dodge tool over that first eye and just do one click okay one click click once only on that eye and click on the other eye and you can't really see it probably here in the presentation but it has made those a little bit brighter and a little bit better trust me um now we're going to put in the blue painted background so in the download says a background image which you can get which is a good image the kind of thing they have behind portraits if the portrait was taken in a studio of a backdrop uh, it's kind of a backdrop so this one here uh, we need to unlock that background layer so it's got a padlock here when you go to the layers uh, just click on that padlock uh, to unlock it all right now we go file uh, place embedded and that'll bring in this background image you've got from the downloads and then of course we need to stretch it out uh, so it covers the image all right now it might stretch out over the edge of the image that's okay because it's uh, going to get cropped out later on so we're just stretching that right down so it covers all of the image we don't care if it's too big or not and then press the enter key when finished and now we need to move the blue background in the layer stack so that it's behind the model instead of in front of it okay so there's our background we brought in and stretched, but we need to uh, click on it, push down and hold down our mouse button and move it down here so it goes behind. Or alternatively, you can click on this picture, push down, hold your mouse and move it up. All right, but we've got to basically swap those around so the background's behind. Now, it, the blue background's behind you and we can't see it because we've got this gray background. So the next step is we want to remove this gray background. All right, so get on the quick selection tool. Now, if you're in uh, up the top right hand corner, if you clicked on that uh, icon there and change from essentials into painting, uh, you may not have the quick replacement tool. So you might have to go up the top right hand corner and just uh, click there and get back into essentials mode. But you need to be on this tool which we've used a lot in previous lessons all right so the quick selection tool get onto that and on the quick selection tool if you just use that select subject button at the top um, it will select all of the model and then we need to click on the select and mask button uh, which is next to there so use this select subject it should select the model for you select a mask uh, and that'll take you into here now into here use this drop down arrow and go for overlay so it's on a red background that'll make things real easy to see and smoothness we're just setting to 60 and feathering to 8.1 okay so that's all like that and then you click the ok button then we're going to go select inverse so you can select the opposite and get that gray background selected okay so now you should see it's like this where the gray background is the one that's selected and if you press the delete key on the keyboard um, that blue should now show through because we're going to delete out that gray if the gray refuses to delete it's probably because you forgot to click the padlock on the background layer you have to click that padlock so it's turned off otherwise it won't delete this ah uh, so this is looking really good it looks much better with that kind of portraity type background so you can press ctrl d to get rid of these kind of selection ants and there is a slight little uh, white bit around the outline of the hair which we're going to fix up in the next step so there is a light colored outline on the model but we're going to cover it within a shadow so on this layer here layer zero of the model just right click on that and go to blending options and then click here don't click the tick just click on the word inner shadow all right and for inner shadow we're just going to use these uh exact settings which are here opacity 32 distance only needs to be a little bit it's only a two pixel thin white line around the edge of the model's head so keep that really small so set all those up and click okay and <coughs> 
if you've accidentally clicked this twice and you've got a couple of inner shadows showing, which is easy to do, see how I've got an extra one here uh, because I kind of ticked and clicked and did the wrong thing. That's the one we're using. This one we don't need. Um, so if you've got an extra one, you just go to FX and go to reset to default list and the extra one should go away. Uh, now the final steps, we've got that background in there. We got rid of that white kind of glow around there and we are now ready to hold down the control key and click both of these so they're selected and we're going to merge them into a single layer all right remember how we did that when we have separate layers control click hold down the ctrl key click them to get them both selected <coughs> and we'll have them in a single layer here. Now we're gonna add another new layer of the plus sign. This one's just gonna be called adjustments. Do your good old control, alt, shift, and E to copy everything from here up to here. Uh, the reason being, if we mess up adjustments, we can just delete that layer and we still got this one and we can just try to do adjustments again. Uh, so we're just kind of playing it safe here by copying everything from there into this separate layer. Now, on adjustments, uh, we're going to set brightness, contrast, and hue saturation, all right? So uh, this one is for hue saturation, so image adjustments, hue saturation. Just taking it down a little bit, minus 5, to just desaturate a bit of the color out and clicking OK, because we had a little bit of too much color. And we're also going to desaturate the, or we're going to saturate the lips. The lips are a little bit dull. That'd be nice if the lipstick was a bit pinker and a bit brighter. We can do that with the sponge tool. Okay, so uh, we get on the sponge tool, which is kind of underneath the paint bucket. So it's probably on lollipop tool from when we did the eyes. You'll have to push down and get the sponge tool instead. Change the lollipop uh, dodge tool into the sponge tool. And then we're going to just have a small size 15. Set it to saturate in a really small flow. So it's just going to saturate them a little bit. All right. And then as you sponge over them, the color should become a bit brighter like this. So just try and get it a bit brighter as if she's wearing slightly brighter lipstick. Uh, when we were doing the painting or we use slightly brighter paint when we were painting the lips would be more like it. If you make mistakes, just control Z and try again. Now the rubber stamp tool, uh, that painting made a bit of unevenness. So you can get on your rubber stamp tool. Uh, here we're just using a big size. Use small opacity, like only around 20%. And we can kind of just rubber stamp on the face to even it out a bit. And we can also make it a smaller size here and rubber stamp on the lips. So make sure you've got those settings and keep the opacity down. And <coughs> so we've just evened out the lips and did a bit of evening out on the face. Now this ear, we haven't done much to that and it's still like it was in the photo and we've kind of got a bit of a gap here too, like it looks like there's, uh, she's got a hook on her ear and the ear doesn't continue. There must be some hair going over the top of it or something like that. So we need to fix up the ear. So yeah, these final steps do take a while. So fixing the ear, uh, first thing is to get on that sponge tool. And just in this area here, just desaturated because we don't want the ears standing out as bright. We really want to just look at the face and have that as the main part of the painting. And the ear just happens to be there with the hair behind it, but it's not a feature. At the moment, it's kind of too much of a feature. It's got too much detail. So first step is to desaturate it with that sponge color, trying to get it into this dull color of the face. And we're going to have to zoom right in here and use a small rubber stamp tool. Uh, probably with more, maybe more opacity than 22, but we're going to stamp a few times and try and fill that gap in, that black gap. Try and stamp it like this so the ear looks a little bit more connected. So you can see the ears really faded away here, but we're just kind of getting rid of that black bit and just moving it down a bit like that. Um, now the final thing, I think this is the final thing, now that we've dulled it down, it's in the background, we're going to get the lasso tool here, so you need to just get that, that's up near the top of the tools, and we're just drawing around there until we meet up with where we started, then we let go, and that should be in the marching ants and all selected, and we're going to do our select and mask, 
Okay, and we're going to make it really fuzzy around the edge of that selection. So using a feathering of about 20 and smoothing about 40. So I got the ear selector, but we want everything else around it to be quite fuzzed out and not affected too much by the next thing we're going to do. So we're doing our good old filter blur and Gaussian blur and adjusting it up to 2.5 just to blur that ear out a bit. Okay, so it's not just going to be in the background and the face is the main thing that we're looking at. So that looks more, much better. The emphasis is on the face. This is all just sort of background bits here with the hair and the ear. All right, so this is kind of, you know, just touching up and trying to make it as good as we can. You could forget about doing the ear if you want to, because it was pretty much finished as we had it. Um, now, some final adjustments to the hair. Like we said, the hair is always the hardest thing. So we just use the rubber stamp tool to also even out a few bits of hair. So see where that pothole is now? We've kind of filled it in with hair. Uh, and our airbrush portrait is looking pretty good. So that's sort of our before one. And that's where we've ended up with the nice bright airbrush uh, portrait. All right, so now we need to just do a bit of a live demonstration in Photoshop. Uh, we'll try not to make this too long because there's been a 40 minute video uh, already. So take a break now if you want to, and we'll come back in Photoshop and just show you a few things with the mixer brush lesson that need to be done. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. We've opened up uh, the starting picture from the downloads. And remember the first thing we're doing is we're going to filter and then to camera raw filter and that should start up camera raw here. And we're taking the highlights all the way down. We're taking the shadows all the way up like that. And we're taking the whites back a little bit and the blacks up a little bit. So this is kind of the usual uh, Kind of just first thing we do, uh, which will just make it look less like a photo. And then we say, OK. All right. So that's our first little bit of uh, things doing. Now, over here, we've got our layers. If you're not seeing your layers, remember, you go window layers and make sure they're ticked. So we need to go to this plus sign down the bottom right hand corner and make a new layer. And we'll double click in that layer and call it face. And this face actually includes all of the skin. So on that face, now up the top here, we'll just leave it in essentials because on your regular paintbrush, you will have the uh, mixer brush tool. All right. So just on regular paintbrush, we push on that uh, arrow in the corner and get on the mixer brush tool. Now remember the settings we were supposed to use, um, I think I've got them set up already. It's very important to have um, this one. This one here, uh, load brush needs to be turned. If you have that on like that, it's going to really make a mess when we do mixer brushing. I'll just control Z back. Uh, that one needs to be turned off. So you see this checkered flag here. The clean brush here needs to be turned on. We're using moist 10, 5, 50, 50. I think that's right. And sample all layers is ticked. Remember your screen might show a stack of layers, squares on top of each other. Make sure that's highlighted. Uh, so we look pretty much ready to go here. And I can't remember what the size is. Um, actually, that's probably a fairly good size to go with. All right, so we need to zoom right in. So I'm on this magnifying glass tool. I'm just clicking it a couple of times and see how we got all this kind of um, texture on the skin. You can see the surface with uh, lumps on it. So we need to be on our mixer brush. And the idea is to just start painting down. And what should happen is it's very slow, but remember we're going kind of down and around this way. Hopefully this is showing in the video. And then we're sort of coming down. Remember here, you go in kind of a U shape a bit. All right, so we're just trying to get that all, get all this texture out. So here we're going round in circles on the cheeks. Remember down the sides, you kind of need to follow the lines in the face. Here we're going like this. We're not doing the lips. We might have to go up and down there. But anyway, we're just doing a whole bunch of mixer brush. So look, we won't do all of this. When you get to the eyes, you're kind of coming around like this a bit. But you can see that's smoothing it all out. So the idea is we're just airbrushing everything around here. We'd sort of have to come down, come straight down to the nose, 
Uh, here you can go round in circles a bit, but then up here you kind of need to follow the lines of the hair. All right, so that's the idea with the skin and you just keep doing, uh, I'm just pushing down my mouse and doing it, then letting go, pushing down again. Maybe I could do some click clicks there. Uh, all right, so the idea is you've got to keep doing that for ages until uh, the skin's all clear. So I won't do all of it. Let's get on to the next thing. I'm just going to now click the plus sign down the bottom, make another layer, double click in it. And this one's going to be the eyes. Just to show you some things about the eyes quickly. Uh, now the eyes, that mixer brush is way too big. We need to zoom right in on those eyes. And we need a much smaller mixer brush. So let's take this down to, I think the video said to use about a size 10. I might even go for a six here. So on this right hand eye, see how I'm just going down this bit first along that line, all right? Then I'm kind of just going round in this part, this gray part. Then I'm separately gonna go round in the brown part. And I'm separately going to do the big bit there. I'm not doing any eyelashes. So I'm just trying to make it look like it's not like a photo where we can see details of the eyes. It's more like a painting. And this white bit, I'm just going around, kind of just going around in circles, basically little uh, circles. And I'm going around here. I don't want to paint that white into here. Remember, you can use your control Z to go backwards if you make mistakes like that. But anyway, that's sort of how you're going to do the eyes. Once the eyes are done, uh, we need to move to the lips. So we go to the plus sign down the bottom here, make a new layer, double click in it and call it lips. All right. Now, the idea of lips is we're just trying to uh, smooth out these up and down lines. Maybe we could go to a bigger brush. We're leaving all our mixer brush settings the same, by the way, while we're doing this. So, yeah, see how that's now taking out those vertical lines. So you want to do all of that sort of thing. All right. So that's kind of like that. Now, remember later on in the video, we made another layer and did adjustments because the lips kind of weren't um, bright enough. It was like this paint wasn't bright enough. So let's just simulate doing that here. Uh, what we did was, uh, okay, went on this sponge tool. So over here, it's probably showing the dodge tool like that, the brightening tool. You got to push down in this corner and get on the sponge tool. And with the sponge tool, we were using uh, saturate to put a bit more color into the lips. I'm not sure what's flow. I think we were using 50. Let, anyway, let's just maybe just make it 30%. So see how when we uh, just push down and paint on here, it's making the lips a bit brighter. All right. So this should be done on a separate layer so you can uh, undo it later on. Uh, now I might have gone, t I've gone way too much there. So if that's the case, just go to desaturate and maybe go to a smaller brush. Okay, you can tell I'm a guy and I'm not good at putting on lipstick, right? Uh, but the idea is to give them more color. Now, if you zoom right in, you can see the unevenness there. Remember, we we're talking about getting the rubber stamp tool. So you can get on the rubber stamp tool, make it a lot smaller and opacity only 22%. That looks good. Uh, and what we can do is we can kind of take this and just kind of rubber stamp bits of this orange over to here. But if you just kind of rubber stamp around, um, so click in here to pick a bit of this and click and pick, click and pick and click and pick. I think we needed to kind of run it more up to there. Uh, click and pick. See how this bit's all dodgy in here? If you just click, hold down the ALT key and click here. So we're going to be copying from there and see the plus sign where it is. Um, we're kind of just copying from there and just kind of evening that out a bit. Um, anyway, as you can see, it's quite fiddly and it takes quite a while. I'm just hoping when we uh, zoom back out, because we really just want it to look like it was painted. There's kind of some blobs there. 
We might even need to go back onto our mixer brush and just do a bit more mixing of that stuff that's there. Okay, but anyway, lots of fiddling around. Let's go view fit on screen. Okay, uh, that's a bit too saturated. All right, uh, so back to the sponge tool and maybe we'll just go big, but at least we evened them out. Uh, we're on desaturate, so let's just desaturate a bit. View fit on screen. All right, so anyway, we've changed that and changed the saturation in them. If we turn that off, you can see that's what they used to be on the photo. And if we click the eye on, that's what they are now. So it kind of looks a bit more painting. Uh, now let's do just a couple other things just to show you some bits that we did. Now the next bit was uh, we made a plus layer and let's just call this uh, hair filter. I think it was called hair and brows in the video. So on the hair filter, what we're going to do here is we're going to copy all the work we've done so far. So remember to do that, you have to hold, put your left hand, you got to use shift control and ALT. So three fingers down on them, then E to copy everything you've done from down here up into this layer. All right. So I've copied everything into there and then remember we were going filter and we're going to use filter gallery and we were going to the dry brush one and see how it's made all the effects in the hair. And I think we've got the 291 set up there that we need uh, from when we did this last time. And you can see the hair's all done, but if we zoom in, see, it's really kind of messed up our eyes and eyelashes completely. All right, so remember that was where you went to the Japanese flag down here to make a mask. And if you're on a black paint brush, we just need to change back to normal brush tool and we need to be quite a bit bigger than that. But whoa, maybe not that big. So what we need to do is just sort of paint over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove uh, that filter from this part. So that way we can just kind of be painting with the black over here. We can get our eyelashes back a bit. All right, because that doesn't, I don't know. Some people might like that. I don't like it so much. I liked it the way we had it before where we could see some eyelashes where we've like painted those on. All right, so yeah, there we go. That's how you do the masking to take out the filter. Remember, we didn't do that eye. We only painted this eye over here. Uh, view fit on screen. Okay, so that's how you do that masking bit. And remember, the eyes were a little bit dull. So where the sponge tool is, you can get on the dodge tool. We went really big. I think we said to do like 150 and just one click there and one click there. Just brightens them up a little bit. If you do more than one click, it can start to look fake because this white is too white. So let's just control Z that. All right, so anyway, that's coming together quite nicely. Uh, we also did some image adjustments, brightness, so perhaps uh, brightening up a bit. Ah, we're on the filter at the moment. So we need to be clicked back onto the person in the layers. Uh, then things might work. So we're on the mask. All right, so remember brightening things up, uh, adjusting hue and saturation. Those eyes look like they need a bit of work. Uh, but anyway, that's sort of how you do it. I haven't done a great example of it here, but there are a few of the steps. If you follow them in order better, uh, like I did, and work a bit more carefully, you'll get a much better result. But we, get, we better get back to the presentation and get this wrapped up. So it's just a quick demo of some of the techniques in Photoshop. Obviously follow the steps and it'll come out a lot better. Now your portrait doesn't turn out the exact um, same way every time, all right? You can see when I was trying to rush things there, it wasn't looking great at all. Uh, and it needed a lot more finishing off work done on it. Uh, because this is like the first one we did. Uh, and see the hair, you can notice the hair up there. And this is the second one we did where we were really careful and took a long time on it. Plus we'd learnt a few things doing this one. So this one's kind of a better one, I think. And that's where we saturated the lips and this one, they're not saturated, but you might not like that. You might like it better like this, that's up to you. But look, if yours doesn't come out exactly the same as ours, don't worry because every time you do one of these, it's always slightly a bit different because after all you are doing painting and painting isn't 
isn't taking a photo. Um, now, shout out to fellow YouTuber. So we got some ideas, some good ideas uh, from Photoshop tutorials. I had an old video in CS6 Photoshop about smudge painting and the guy did this painting and this gave us some good ideas uh, for what settings to use on the mixer brush especially uh, because we were doing ours way too heavy and he used that dry brush where he just doesn't load it up at all and just cleans it after each stroke and does things a lot slower than we were trying to do them so shout out to him because that really helped us that video and if you want to see exactly what he does most of these things will kind of work in photoshop cc uh, but not everything he does in there but ours is for Photoshop 2021 CC, so it should work. So that's it for this lesson. So have fun doing Mixer Brush, have a go at it. Give this video a big thumbs up like, because you're learning some really cool stuff here, and it is a lot more complicated and takes a lot more time, but that's the way you get results, okay? You can see when I was just trying to rush it there in the demo, you don't get results doing that way. Follow the steps correctly, step by step, and take your time, and you should be good. And remember, subscribe to our channel so you can see uh, the next videos that are coming out. I think we'll be getting into doing some Adobe Animate Animation uh, next because we're teaching this multimedia course and that's what we're doing next in it. So sorry to the people. There's been people emailing saying, well, when are you going to do a programming video? We thought this was a YouTube uh, programming channel and you're doing all this Photoshop stuff. Well, yeah, look, they changed my part-time job. They changed what I was doing and I'm in doing now doing multimedia. So the plan was, yeah, to do much more programming, but we're doing multimedia instead. It's not my fault. I've got to have a part-time job to make some money and that's what they told me to do. So that's what I'm doing. And it's fun. Multimedia is fun. So why not learn a bit of it? Um, come along to some more videos on Photoshop and Animate and we'll see you in the next lesson.